Okay, here is the Dragon, the Crude Dragon rocket launch. The humans going into space. Uh, and of course, this is a great opportunity to do an analysis, a video analysis, and look at the motion of this thing. So I'm just looking at the video scoping back and forth here. Uh, and I'm going to step you through it. So the first thing we want to do is I want to get the position so that I can get the velocity and acceleration of this rocket. Uh, and and I need to do a couple things. I need to scale the video, and I need to have some reference frames. So if you look at after it gets very high right there, I have nothing in the background to even look at the motion of the rocket. So that's going to be a problem. So I can't get that, and that's fine. I'll focus on this part. The other thing is notice that as the rocket moves up, the camera zooms out. So that changes the scale all the time. So I'm going to need some reference frames. But the very first thing I need to do is find the size of the rocket. So if I go over here, uh, first of all, this is a tracker video. This is what I'm going to be using. You should download this free video analysis program. Uh, over here, I have uh, spaceflightinsider.com. It says the Falcon 9, that's the rocket that pushes it up, has a diameter of 3.7 meters and then a length of 41.2 or 47.7. And I get confused about where the rocket is, so we're going to try to fix that. So let's just go over to Tracker. I've already loaded the video in here. It's already at the first frame that I can really use. Let's see. I kind of like that one better because that thing's gone. So let's just change this to... So if I go over here to the movie, I can start, start frame at, oh, at 6 and then click OK. And that's not super important. But um, now I'm going to zoom in to 200%. And I want to use this diameter right here at 3.7 to scale it. So I'm going to click uh, that thing, click New Calibration Stick. And yes, I'm going fast. Otherwise, this will take forever. And I'm going to click, I should probably zoom in even more right there and right there. And I'm going to say that's 3.7 meters. Um, Let's just zoom in 400%, see what it looks like. Um, that's pretty good. But I can use this now uh, to go back to 100%. And let's look at creating a measuring, a tape measure. OK, and there's the tape measure. Now I can check, right, I, if, if this is off, I can get a rough approximation from this distance from the bottom of the spacecraft to the to this little black line. I think that's the first stage. So if that's, see, okay, there you go. Okay, so this says 47 meters. I, I feel confident that that's that distance, 47 meters, because what would it say, 47 point what? 47.7, and I got 47.9. So, I mean, this is off a little bit, uh, but I'm cool with it, okay? I'm going to go, and if you want to redo this with a little bit more uh, accuracy, um, you know, we could do, actually, let's do this. Let's move this down here. Let's zoom in to 200%. See if I can see the whole thing. Okay, that's good. And now, again, I have a problem where I can't actually see the bottom, technically, but I'm going to put this right there. I'm going to say this is... Uh, 47.7. Okay, so that was a little trick. Do you like that? Okay, so now let's zoom to fit. Now, what do we do? I can pick my origin. I can place that anywhere I want. Let's put it over here. Now, how do I scale this system every time? This is indeed a problem. Um, I need to, ha I can pick two reference points in the video and kind of use that um, to, to track the scale. Uh, I want them farther apart, uh, but I don't really have a lot of options. If, if I, this tower is really good because it's in this, it's right next to the rocket. This water tower is not next to the rocket. Okay. Um, but if they're both, if the distance from these two is close compared to the distance to the camera, which I have a feeling that it is, then I think it will work out okay. Um, there'll be a perspective problems as it zooms in and out, but I don't think it's going to be. I'm going to go for it. That's what I'm telling you. I'm going for it. So and I'm trying to justify why. I'm actually going to use the, the tip of this tower and the tip of that tower. So up here, I'm going to go to Create. Create. Uh, calibration Tools, Calibration Points. Now I need to Shift-click right there and Shift-click right there. And it's not going to be perfect, 
Okay. And then up here in the coordinate system, I need to say not a fixed origin, not a fixed angle, not a fixed scale. Now the fun part. I'm going to step through, go to the next frame, and I'm going to zoom in some too. And what I need to do is in each frame, just fix this. That goes right there. That's right there. Every frame, I need to move those two things. Okay. So let's just do it. And if it, I'm not going to be perfect about it because uh, I'm not super crazy. I am super crazy. But um, so here we're just going to do this. It's like this is the um, the physics version of Bob Ross, right? Because I'm painting. It's because I'm not. I'm doing physics analysis, and it's kind of just you know, maybe it's boring, but. So did you watch the SpaceX launch? I did. I enjoyed it very much. Um, I watched it the first time when it got canceled, uh, and then I watched it again. I felt kind of bad for all the people. They uh, wanted to, you know, do their presentations of rockets and stuff like that, and talk about how it works. And then it doesn't launch. And then the next time, what are you going to do? You can do the same little presentation. I don't. I, don't, I didn't watch everything before the second time, so. Um, but, you know, talking about the different specifications of the dragon, um, things like that. I will say this. I watched it, and I was just so stunned, really, that the spacecraft, the dragon spacecraft, it just has, like, what, three giant iPads in there, touchscreen computers, um, compared to other spacecraft where there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, see, sometimes these, these things don't move too much, and that's fine. Uh, you'll, you'll notice also, if you do this for other videos, if you, um, if you rec if it's recorded in one frame rate and then you, uh, you encode it in a different frame rate, you can get like double frames. So it'll have the same frame twice, which is annoying, but if that happens, just move, go with it. It doesn't make that big of a difference in the end, if you have enough data. And I'm not going to get all the way, I'm just going to get this enough at the beginning so I can get, um, some, some data. If I do this forever, you're going to hate me. I mean, no one wants to watch a 30-minute video. I mean, okay, maybe someone does. But I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to talk the whole way. It's going to be great. But it, this re, this also reminds me that um, I did actually go see a rocket launch. I think it was in 1994. Um, I went with my... We weren't married yet, but my soon-to-be wife, we we were going to, we drove from uh, graduate school in Alabama, and we drove down to Cape Kennedy. It, it was, a, a, I think it was like a one o'clock at not in the morning uh, launch. So we just drove all day and got there, and then we watched it, and then we, you know, got a hotel after that. But um, it was really cool. You know, it was something I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, but I'm really glad I got to see it. So I'd like to go see some more rocket launches. Okay, let's see. How many am I going to get? I want to get until this tower starts getting uh, so zoomed out that I that it's pointless to to put these points there. But see, these points are great. Okay, because they take care of everything. They take care of the location of the coordinate system, they take care of the rotation of the coordinate system, and they take care of the scaling by just marking these points. Now, if you are doing this, and your points go out of the frame of the video so you can't see them anymore, you can add more points. You can have multiple sets of calibration points, and just uh, as long as you can see some new object in the video that you could then mark. So you can have uh, a region where the two points overlap so that you can uh, mark one of them and check the other one uh, still works and then transfer to the new ones. Okay, this looks like... Well, the, the question I want to know is what's the acceleration? Because uh, one of my... Someone asked me, what, how many G's? How many G's they experienced? And I, I didn't know. Um, I didn't look it up either. And so I, I'll get this started, and 
you can see the coordinate system right there. See when I when I move this, this axis right here moves too. Uh, and then I'll probably do a more detailed analysis uh, with more data points and post that in my blog. Actually, you know, I really like to write better than make videos, so but I do like video analysis. See, so here, uh, I it's nice to be able to see the coordinate system because I I know where it should be and I want to keep it uh, in the orientation. Uh, so watch, if, if I move this one a little bit, that one I don't need to move. For some reason it's kind of going slow. Okay, so here, watch, as I move this one a little bit, if I just move that one, you can see that this is tilted, so I probably should move this one a little bit too to get it back. And it's not going to be perfect, okay? This does not have to be perfect to get some really cool data. There it's, it's tilted some. Oops. You can skip steps. Oh, that there I did a whole bunch. Okay. I messed up. Yeah, right there. So if you start skipping forward through this and your calibration points don't stay where they don't keep moving like they're supposed to, then you probably had this coordinate system where you didn't have the uh, you had the fixed origin. So that, that's a mistake. See, that one's off. This one looks off right here. Okay. I've, I don't think I've made a video this long. I think I have enough data. See, but this is... I want to get down to the end up here. Okay. I think... So let's go to, to frame 60. Let's go to 63. Just remember that. Don't take data after 63. Okay. So now what we're going to do is go up here and create a point mass. Uh, so you see that mass up here. You can label if you want. I'm going to switch back to the beginning. Now for the fun part, I can mark the location of the rocket. I'm going to pick this interface point right here in between the two stages because I need to have something that I can easily see. So now I'll just hold down the shift key and click that button. It will it'll advance the next frame and I just I have to keep going. And the graph you're seeing there on the right is the graph of the X position as a function of time which shouldn't be changing too much um, except when I make a mistake when I'm clicking it. And if you want you can zoom in to 400% and really Make sure you're clicking in the right spot. I'm going to get that corner. There is a way to um, uh, automatically click points. Uh, I, I, it's called uh, Auto Tracker, I think it was called. Um, I never use it because sometimes it gets things wrong. I like to just take the extra time and mark these myself. Um, This, this can take time, you know, just be patient. I'm just holding down the shift key and I'm clicking each frame. It automatically moves to the next frame and I click uh, on the thing. I'm looking at the frame counter. I want to go to 63 and then I'll stop it. Although you could keep going further uh, for sure, but that should be enough data. Also, this is really nice because the camera is very far away from the uh, spacecraft. so like the, the top part of the spacecraft is approximately the same distance as the bottom part of the spacecraft, so you don't get this um, perspective error, so that's good. And, and the rocket's moving perpendicular to the direction of the camera, that's good too. 54. And you'll notice that, you know, even if it doesn't seem like my dot is moving very much, that's because the, ca the scale's changing, because the camera's zooming out. Okay, 63. So now I'm going to go over here, and I don't really care about the X position. I care about the Y position. And there we go. Now right-click on this, and I go to Analyze. And there you go. So that's my position as a function of time. It looks fairly linear, but it sh it, I think there is a curve to it. I click up here, Analyze, Curve Fits, and then I'm going to click uh, Line, change that to Parabola. And there you go. So this is my... 
a function. It says a t squared, where a is 2.8. Okay, so 2.8 is uh, one half of this. The acceleration is 2.8. So if I multiply this by uh, by two, I get the acceleration. So this is going to give me an acceleration of what 5.6 meters per second squared. So that's less than a well. If you add a g, so it'd be like one point. I'm trying to think 1.6 g's. Um, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, so let's do this too. I could get the velocity of here. Uh, if you want, actually, you can do the following. If I go up here to this and plot vertical vo velocity, uh, that looks terrible. Okay, so I'm not even going to bother with that. Let's go back to the position. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to stop there. I'll put more analysis on my blog, uh, but it might not be up right away. But I wanted to get this video out here so you could get started on doing some analysis. Now, there's another thing to analyze, too. The the landing of the Falcon 9 booster on the Of Course I Still Love You drone, that's another great place to uh, look at acceleration. There is a camera view from that that's not on the drone on the, on the drone barge, so it should be good. I'll probably do that one, too. But that's a good start for you. I hope you have fun with your video analysis, and we'll do some more physics later.